Red Shark IBC 2025 coverage is sponsored by... Hey everybody, how are you? My name is Jason Druss from the Adobe Premiere team. We're here at IBC 2025. It is day one. The energy is high. The convention center is packed. And we're here at the Adobe booth talking about Adobe Premiere Pro 25.5. We just dropped a brand new version of Premiere Pro. It's in your Creative Cloud app now. So if you want to use any of the stuff you're going to see here today, head over to your Creative Cloud app, go to Premiere Pro and update to the latest version of the app. We have so much good stuff here in Premiere. First and foremost, we have over 90 new real-time GPU accelerated, modern, gorgeous, beautiful effects, transitions, and animations. Um, these effects and transitions are powered by Film Impact that recently joined the Adobe family. And I am so psyched to show you how amazing they are. Um, come along over here, we'll take a look. So I have this timeline right here. This is a social cutdown, and it's filled with dozens of real-time effects and transitions. If I play back here, we're gonna open up with a little VHS damage right here. And I'll just go over and like play through that frame by frame to see how, how good some of this stuff is. Uh, we're going right into a light leak right here. If I scrub through that, you can see how nice and transparent it is. And let me tell you, these things are so customizable. I can go ahead and click on the light leak transition. I can go to the queue and I can just go ahead and move it back and forth wherever I want to. And it's always gonna play back in real time. I also have a lot of effects and transitions on my text right here. If I click on this text file right here and I zoom in, I'm actually using a, an effect called RGB split, which creates these really awesome anaglyph effects. I have it applied to my text and my graphics. And all I have to do if I want to adjust it is I can change the softness. That's the original anaglyph look. And then I can blur that out to create this amazing pink look right here. Let's go ahead and apply a transition ourselves and see what it looks like. All of your 90 new effects and transitions are available in the effects panel, of course, under video uh, transitions and video effects. You'll see them all right here, but they're also available in the film impact dashboard. This thing is really cool. It gives you real-time previews of every effect and transition before you apply them. It also really neatly organizes uh, your effects and your transitions from, you know, let's say uh, lights and blurs to um, elevate your cinematography and color grading all the way to um, motion effects for adding animations to your text and graphics files. Uh, they're all organized right here. Let's go over to transitions. Let's go to smart tools right here and let's click motion camera. Motion camera is a really awesome transition that emulates, you know, cameras kind of moving inside and outside of each other between shots. So I have my two clips highlighted here. I'm gonna to go to motion camera, click apply, and here it is. Let's go ahead and play it back, see how it looks. And that's pretty awesome, right? And again, these are so customizable. I can click on the motion camera. I can go to a different preset. From the default, I'll switch to super twist out counterclockwise. Let's go ahead and play that back, see how it looks. And that's what we're going for. I don't have to do a thing, it is so cool. Now, if I click on this adjustment layer right here, I have a vignette and a wonder go applied. Um, the transitions are wonderful. My favorite thing about the effects as a, as, a, as a film colorist is it gives me so much more room and latitude to express myself creatively, to elevate the cinematography and color grading. If I turn off the vignette, and the Wonder Glow, you can see how much work the effects are actually doing. Let's turn Wonder Glow back on. If I turn Vignette back on, take a note at the corner right here, because the vignettes don't just darken the frame. I am darkening, I am blurring, and I'm actually adding photorealistic chromatic aberration to the corners of the shot right there. But my absolute favorite thing about these new effects and transitions is the surprise me button, all right? So if we take a look at Wonder Glow here, I mean, you can go pretty deep if you want to customize this. There's a lot of parameters you can adjust. You can keyframe every single one of them. But if I click the surprise me button, I can ideate past my imagination outside of the box and filter through all different kinds of styles. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to click this literally as fast as I can. Um, there's literally thousands of variations of this effect that I can filter through. I'm going to find one that I like. Let's stick with um, this one right here. And then what I'm going to do is just turn down the intensity a little bit surprised me, got me, you know, 90% of the way there. And of course I can command Z or control Z if I want to undo that. And now everything is totally randomized and I have a completely different style. I can play it back and it's still playing back in absolute real time because of the GPU acceleration. Now, the cool thing about the surprise me button and all these parameters, 
yes, it's it's technically it's it's over 90 FX and transitions, but when you consider the surprise me button, all of the seed values, all the parameters you can adjust here, you're really dealing with hundreds of thousands of variations. So you'll never use the same effect or transition twice if you don't want to. And even better yet, for the power users out there, now that uh, all of these effects and transitions are first party in Premiere Pro, you can adjust them, add them to text, add them to whatever you want, and then you can save them as presets if you get to a customization that you really, really love. You can save them as presets, import them, export them, share them with your buddies and your colleagues, and now you have a library of effects uh, to your liking. So last thing I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about motion design and animation. Um, when it comes to Premiere Pro, you can do some, you know, some, some really interesting text and graphics animations in the app, even more now with Film Impact, now that I can just drag and drop a pop or a wiggle or a grow or a shrink or a space on my cinematic titles or lower thirds. But when it comes to like real animation, the, you know, the thought has always been, if it's motion design, I have to go to After Effects. I'm gonna right click, dynamic link, go to After Effects, do that. And After Effects is an amazing application. If you're an advanced video editor, if you're a professional motion designer, After Effects is the best motion design application in the world, especially if you are a professional motion designer or very, very advanced video editor. But for most of us end-to-end -end video editors, like myself, we got a lot of work to do. We gotta cut, we gotta mix our audio, we gotta do our color grading, we gotta you know, animate all of our graphics. It's extremely time consuming. But right here in Premiere Pro, I can animate and do motion design through a modality that I value as a video editor, which is dragging and dropping effects and transitions. So take a look at this timeline. Um, this is literally one of my favorite demos um, I've, I've ever uh, shown. So I have two PNGs here, just sitting, doing nothing. They're just being PNGs. They're big, they're blocky. I have a couple of them stacked right here. And I wanna challenge myself and I thought, how far could we really take this? Um, to the ends of the earth, how far can we stretch the limits of animation and motion design natively inside of Premiere Pro in real time um, as a video editor? So I have this after animation uh, timeline right here, and I'm just going to go ahead, turn up the volume, and play it back for you folks. And I see we're on mute, so let's unmute that real quick, and we'll turn it down a little bit, and let's play it back and see what it looks like. That's just fun, right? Um, it's fun. It's supposed to be fun. This is what we do for a living. Okay, so if we, if we backtrack this right here on these opening graphics, I have that same little RGB split trick that I showed you earlier. I don't know, I just like love a pink fluffy background. It's a lot of fun. Um, I have a grow effect on this adjustment layer over all my graphics so I can grow them all together without nesting them or applying separate effects. And then we go straight into Kaleidoscope. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete Kaleidoscope transition and just play back and see the cut. And that's what it looks like with this clone effects applied. Clone effects is a tool that will clone a PNG, a JPEG file. Um, it'll even um, clone text or graphics or emojis if you want to. Um, and what it'll do is duplicate them and automatically animate them for you. And with the surprise me button, I actually made this demo by doing a clone effect, hitting surprise me, doing a little bit of keyframing and tweaking, changing the prescale, and in about 15, 20 minutes, I had all the different kinds of clone animations I needed to, uh, to serve as the foundation of the project. Now I'm gonna hit Control Z here, Command Z, get my kaleidoscope transition back, just to show you there's no tricks up our sleeves and this is actually running in real time. Isn't that cool? I never thought in my wildest dreams there would be a transition called kaleidoscope that I'd wanna use every day, but here we are. So a couple more things I wanna show you right here. Um, this effect right here, if I turn this layer off, uh, this is the bokeh blur effect, and I have it on an adjustment layer right above. And if I turn that off, you can see like this is the, the shot before I apply the effect. And all I did is I applied bokeh blur, I customized it to my liking because it gives this very, very photorealistic bokeh blur with chromatic aberration if you want it. And then all I did is I went in the ECP and I just keyframed 
the strength of the bulk, bulk of blur as the graphics went back and came forward. This is easy peasy. Like again, I am not a professional motion designer and I, uh, let me do this for a second. I'm not a professional motion designer and I never will be, but knowing that I can accomplish things like this now with light sweeps and glows and blurs in Premiere Pro is amazing. Even this right here, if I turn this adjustment layer off, this is a Mosaic FX. Mosaic FX is available as an effect or a transition, but I made this cool retro 8-bit. And if I just, again, like frame by frame go through this, going from one to nine to more pixels, like that's really amazing. And then just knowing these are gonna dance in real time in Premiere Pro. Uh, the last thing I wanna show you is motion tween. If I go back to the before timeline, you'll notice I had these right here and I go from A to B, and then on the cut right there, they're all just stacked on top of each other in the same location. Motion tween is a transition that will recognize where a graphic is before the cut, and then where the graphic moves after the cut, and it'll perform a really beautiful dynamic animation to move that graphic from A, or, or, or anything you want, from A to B. So what I did is I just had these four Premiere logos right here going in kind of opposite directions, coming back with a simple motion tween transition applied and that's the result and then i mirrored glassed us out of there fading to black um yeah so that's what we have uh in in premiere pro we also have uh more dynamic audio waveforms you can now adjust uh, multiple audio transitions uh, at the same time we have more dynamic audio waveforms as you're adjusting your audio we have better format support we have faster playback performance um and it's just a really big release for premiere pro so if you want to see what's new and use this yourself. This is all available now and all 90 plus of these effects and transitions are included in your plan. So go to your Creative Cloud app, update to Premiere Pro 25.5 and have some fun, experiment. Tell us what you wanna see next because we're gonna be making more of these.